hello guys my name is basco mk welcome to my youtube channel video so today video is gonna be about can you take a chip accidentally and today we have a guest who's gonna discuss with us so and he's gonna tell us what it is and how do they take it something like that so let's jump into video make sure don't forget to subscribe share comment down below thank you so much heavy metal bands have sung about it authors have written about it horror movies have featured it and churches have taught on it but recently because of the coronavirus there seems to be a renewed interest in all things in time a renewed interest in the prophecies found in the bible and for many including myself it seems the signs we are told should be there at the end now seem to be there including the technology and the mindset necessary for the mark of the beast. Now, I have been a pastor since 1988, and I've noticed whenever people start talking about this mark, it interests some, but it frightens others. I mean, the thought of a mark that can seal your eternal fate is serious business, isn't it? So my goal in this video is to free those who are frightened from their fear. Now, before we get into what frightens people, for those who are new to this, let's define what the mark is. The first mention is found in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. We are told it will be a mark that is placed on the right hand or the forehead. This mark will be the name or number of the beast, or as we know him, the Antichrist. And when that number is calculated, it will be the infamous 666. Now this mark is going to do a couple things. It will identify those who worship the Antichrist, and it will also determine if you can buy and sell. Now people can refuse this mark, but Revelation 20, verse 4 says that the result will be being beheaded. So at that time, people will be given two choices. Take the mark or die. Well, that's bad enough. But what I found really frightens people is what happens to those who do take the mark. At that moment, their fate is sealed and they will spend eternity in hell. So that's the mark. But let's look at a couple of reasons the thought of the mark can terrify people. First, there are those who are afraid they have somehow taken the mark already. They're not sure they have, but they're not sure they haven't, and what if they have? It's interesting, while studying for this video, a brother called me and said there was a time he was convinced he'd taken the mark. If you asked him how he took it, he wouldn't have known, but he was convinced he had and he was terrified. He is not alone. Some of you may remember in 2014 there was a fictional study printed by the National Report that stated one in three Americans have been implanted with RFID chips, most unaware. Now an RFID chip, or radio frequency identification chip, is a microchip that can be placed under the skin that can be read by scanners. Many believe this is the way the mark will be implemented. And so this report was a joke, but social media picked up on it and ran it as being true. You can see how this would cause great concern, right? If the microchip is the mark of the beast, and if I might have a microchip in me somewhere, then am I lost? Isn't that what the scriptures say? Listen, this is a common tactic of the devil. He loves to take our imaginations and fill them with lies that terrify us. He tells us we can't be saved. We're lost because we've taken the mark or blasphemed the Holy Spirit. That was my first big trial. He wants to steal our joy and fill us with fear. Why? Nehemiah 8.10 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. A joy-filled believer is a strong believer. A believer filled with fear is a weak believer. And listen, a believer filled with fear is no threat to the devil at all. You're not going to go tell somebody about how wonderful Jesus is if you're not sure you're saved. But a joy-filled believer is a constant threat to the kingdom of darkness. Your life shouts out the greatness of who Jesus Christ is. Then your words clarify how to know him. So the first question I want to clear up is this. Can you take the mark by accident and not know it? Or as in the fictional study by the National Report, can somebody put the mark on you or in you without you being aware? Let's put it this way. Can you go in and get a tattoo and the tattoo artist is in league with the devil and sneaks the mark into the design and you're lost? That's question one. Let's move on to a second scenario. The second question, what about those who have been chipped already? This is becoming big business in different parts of the world. Listen, it's quick and easy. A microchip 
the size of a grain of rice is injected in between the thumb and the forefinger. In Sweden, companies are paying to have all their employees chipped because this provides an easier way for security in the plant. Badges can be easily counterfeited, but that chip can't. It also offers an easy way to purchase things like lunch in the cafeteria. Scan your hand and the money is automatically taken out of your account. It's extremely convenient, isn't it? You don't have to carry cash or credit cards or any kind of identification. Let's say a passport. All those things can be lost or stolen, but that little chip you always have with you can contain all that information. It's also good for the party crowd, I guess. Nightclubs in Netherlands and Spain offer implants to customers for entry and payment purposes. Buy a drink, scan your hand, and you're good to go. Now put yourself in the place of one of those workers in Sweden or a clubber in Spain. You've been chipped. It worked great. You loved it. Then you hear the gospel and see your need of forgiveness, but you also hear about the mark of the beast as supposedly it's a microchip that has been placed in you and you have one of those. Did you unknowingly seal your fate? And again, the devil will use this lie to keep people from the Lord. It's no use. It's too late. You can't be forgiven. You took the mark. Well, let's deal with that first fear then, that you can accidentally take the mark. It will help us if we can see when this mark actually appears on earth. And let me just say this, that hasn't happened yet. That's not going to happen until the middle of the tribulation period after, now listen, there is a one world government and the Antichrist and the false prophet have risen to power. When that happens, the false prophet will perform all kinds of miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven. He will also have an image of the Antichrist erected and miraculously give that image life so it can speak. The scripture says all of this is going to be done in full view of man. In other words, this is not going to be done in the secret. This is meant to impress and deceive. So it's going to be done out in the open and it will be covered by every news outlet. So when this happens, everyone will know about it. And believe me, everyone will be talking about it. So now listen. Therefore, nobody has accidentally taken the mark. Let me say that again. Nobody has accidentally taken the mark because there has been no mark to take yet. It is the mark of the beast and the beast or antichrist has not been revealed yet. So nobody has accidentally taken the mark, but let's see if you can innocently take the mark and seal your fate. This would be those who may have been chipped already, but you had no idea there could be spiritual ramifications. Perhaps your company said they'd like you to do it because it would make things easier for them. So wanting to be a good employee, you did it. So did you accidentally take something that has damned you? Well, let me comfort you too. There will be no accidental chippings that damn your soul to hell. People who take this mark will fully understand the spiritual implications of what they are doing. God will make sure they do. Listen to what the scriptures say in Revelations 14, 9 through 11. And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath poured full strength into the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, these worshipers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name. So God in his grace will make sure you understand what the mark is and what it means. He is going to send an angel who will fly around warning everyone. So those who take the mark will understand it is a deliberate choice to reject God and worship the Antichrist. So my friends, this is good news, isn't it? You haven't taken the mark because there hasn't been any mark to take yet. And nobody will be able to slip you the mark unaware. People take this mark with full knowledge of what it means. So if you're one of the growing number that has already been chipped, you can relax. You can still be saved and you can still go to heaven. You can rest assured that microchip in you is not the mark of the beast. Why? Again, because there is no mark yet. Now, one more question you might be asking, and it is a good one. Can I escape from having to make that choice altogether? I mean, receiving the mark or being beheaded? 
I'm not sure I like my options. You got anything else? Well, fortunately, God does. I believe Scripture teaches that those who bow to Jesus now won't be there then when all this comes down. This is what is called the rapture. It says God will take his church out to be with him before all this happens. Now, I don't have time to go in-depth on this, but I am going to start a series on end times, and we'll get into it then. If you're interested, hit the subscribe and notification buttons down below. But listen, I see all the events that are happening in this world, and I believe we are in those end times. And you have to know there is only one way to be safe. Jesus came to earth to die for your sins so you can be with him forever. You don't have to go through the great tribulation where you will have to refuse the mark and be beheaded to get into heaven. But here's the thing. You must bow now. And you must believe. You must be willing to turn from your sin and place your trust in Jesus Christ alone for the salvation of your soul. Those who do, God promises he will accept them and they will become his child. And you can do that right now. It's not complicated. You don't have to go to anybody else and you don't have to go anywhere else. Right there where you are watching this, you can go to God and ask him to forgive you. I love the story that Jesus tells of the tax collector in Luke 18. He saw he was a sinner and needed to be forgiven. And so he called out to God with a simple prayer. Listen to what he said. Here it is. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said at that moment he became a child of God. And friend, you can do that right now. You can go to God and you can say, have mercy on me. Save me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. I trust in your son, Jesus Christ. And listen, if you will pray that prayer, God says he will receive you. You will become his child. You will be forgiven and heaven will become your home. Also, if you have prayed that prayer, we would love to know. I put an email address in the description, so drop us a line. Let us know that you've prayed that, that you've become a child of God, and let us know if you have any questions so we can come alongside and help. So God bless you. Do me a favor, hit those buttons down below, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Leave a comment down below, but just keep it clean. No name calling, no swearing. Listen, comments like that are moderated, and I will be the only one who sees it while I'm deleting it. Well, God bless you, my friends. All right, thank you, Mr. Fortunots. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe, share, comment down below. Thank you, guys.